So I was child, my first experience was uh, uh, to lead a donkey in the mountain. So I support an old woman, uh, a grandmother, <laughs> uh, Italian grandmother, so with <laughs> in this way. And walking in the wood, then uh, bring the, the wood uh, to the farm and so on. Every day make this. So my first experience was very experiential with donkey <laughs> and also horses that make work, work horses and this kind of stuff. So in, the, in that context, then I continuing to make experience uh, as groom when I was uh, uh, 16, 17 and so on. But I was a strange groom, uh, a strange boy that take care for horses, for example, as for dogs. And uh, I remember when uh, there was um, some uh, difficult situation in which conventional approach doesn't work, my master at that time generally said to these uh, owners or people, horse owners or horse people, say, I have to suggest to you someone, he's a strange boy, but maybe that his work can give a good contribution to solve that problem. So I was labeled as a strange boy because I act in a strange way from a conventional perspective at that time. And nowadays, I still I am remembered from that people, oh, Francesco, I remember, I still remember with that horse how you behave strangely, but the horse was very, very nice in that situation. So that is my level, to be strange. What is it that you do that is strange or considered strange? Uh, for example, uh, uh, make some uh, uh, walking in the wood with uh, a difficult horse without ride him, but uh, uh, with the rope uh, going in the deep wood. So the experience uh, that we make together create a relationship and so the problem experience by experience was solved itself, for example. That was a way of thinking uh, not usual, because generally in a conventional context when you have to solve a problem you confront the horse, you go linear to the horse. But in that way, at that time and nowadays, I become accomplished with that horse. I become uh, a partner in making experience with the horse. So we together move in the deep wood, into the wild, to go out as new living beings, more cognitive, more themselves. We have to consider that a problem generally is just a part, generally a little part of a life of a horse. A problem generally is a human problem, than a horse problem. And then uh, if you begin to make uh, uh, experience, for example, a horse that have uh, difficulty in the approach with the altar is not a problem horse. It's a horse that won't become owner of that altar, of that tool. Uh, so, if you facilitate and create and give space and time to the horse to become owner of the altar and this, or, or um, about the saddle, for example, exploring that object, uh, become uh, owner really of that object, the problem become to solve because uh, you as human move in a different way and you together with the horse can sniff an altar together and then move away to make other things and the day after you can uh, uh, scratch 
the horse uh, uh, with the halter without desensitize the horse, but sensitize the horse to the horse. I mean that the horse become not trained to the altar, but owner of the altar, are two different processes. One of a training, the sensitization training and so on, connected with operant conditioning that is ethical, questionable, and the other is learning. Learning from the perspective of the horse, in the coexistence also with human, are very easy and simple things. With training we make difficult things, both for humans and the horses. In a learning context, in a co-learning context, in a co-reality context, in a co-existence context, we make things easier, really easier, more than we think. I facilitate the journey for a horse to come back to himself or to herself. This is really important. It's not making a new animal, but come back when that horse is, was born. Also, the political question is important. The right of a horse to be owner of his own experience, of his own life, of his own relationship with humans. The animal question and the animal ethics questions uh, in the recent years uh, arise more and more and about horses animal ethics is crucial to understand how move in another paradigm but animal ethics really from the animal perspective really from horse perspective not something connected with uh, ethical equitation or so on, or ethical horsemanship is something connected from the rights of animals, or from the rights of horses, so equine ethics in this case. Animal ethics is uh, one principal pillar of uh, understanding how to move in a new paradigm. Uh, in recent years uh, there are a lot of uh, people talking about uh, leadership on horses, for example. And uh, I remember that uh, uh, Levinas, that was a philosopher, uh, state generally and usual, uh, he say uh, that uh, ethics start when you, in front of an elevator, you say to another person, please, after you. And this please, after you, is important to understand how to move forward and how to give space to the horse. So the human that decentrate himself and say to the horse, please, after you, it's really important to understand, practically, metaphorically. Because leadership concepts are generally based on the human first and then the horse. So, in an opposite way. But following Levinas, ethics start, and animal ethics start, paraphrasing Levinas, when the human say, horse, please, after you.